Gerardo Pagliani is joining us from beautiful Verona, Italy. He is the managing director of BIKM. And, uh, and also Wolfgang Hall is with us. He is uh, the field service lead at Open Source Integrators. Wolfgang has been with Open Source Integrators for three years. And prior to that, uh, worked at ESRI, which is a, a large global uh, software business in geoanalytics and uh, geospatial technology. So Wolfgang is a recognized expert in the fields of field service management and also has become quite an Odoo expert, has worked on very large Odoo implementations for enterprises. So we'll turn the time over to Wolfgang and Corrado and encourage everyone to please post your questions in the Q&A or the chat window. And uh, also we will um, have, we have over on Discord, we have the, the uh, room for the talks, hashtag uh, track two talks. So please post there. And if we could also ask for this to please be recorded then we'll uh, turn the time to Wolfgang and Corrado. Thank you. All right. Thank you for the introduction, Rich. Uh, very, very pleased and, and actually honored to be here. Talk about BI integration in Odoo. Um, OCA is just the lifeblood of the community to have all sorts of good things added to the ERP world and BI integration, of course, falls into that as well. So we're going to talk a little bit about the, the role that OCA plays here, but we're also going to introduce something new. And that's why I asked Corrado uh, to join because um, he's going to show actually a live demo. So uh, as we dive in, just a, a quick introduction here, what's on the agenda? Um, first, why BI, business intelligence integration? Where are we today in BI, and particularly uh, with the aspect of integrating it into Udo? And then what are the gaps and some roadmap? And maybe if um, people want to chime in, I, I think there are many, many, many experts in BI that are actually in the OCA community. And since BI relates directly to what we do in Udo as the ERP. I think we see a lot of expertise in this, this area in general. So I don't want to pretend that um, anyone here that's presenting is just the, the one expert, right? So we have maybe some new viewpoints and that um, maybe we can get into some discussion leading uh, from, from, our, from our presentation here. So on the agenda, what is BI? The quote I put together based on, uh, you know, what you usually do is you look at what other people say, what you think about it. And I, I think this resonated with me. So I put this together slightly different. It's the integration that leverages existing tools and infrastructure to provide actionable insight via business analysis, data mining, and visualization. And I realize there is a lot more detail behind that, but it's... The key thing to look at actionable insight, because what it means is I have a number of questions and I need to have some sense of where I'm going. So BI can provide the answers if you know what actually your questions are. And that is an obvious statement, but it's not so simple because it's hard to define sometimes what is it actually that I'm looking for. And so the question is, what do I need to analyze? What is the thing that has the biggest impact? And that leads me to what are we trying to optimize? Is it time or price or scope? Quality has to be the underlying element of all of these. But we really have these competing objectives. And we need to be clear when we start an analysis to know where we want to go with this. And this is where good tools can help. And sometimes, and not too infrequent, I think, we get a little bit of a surprise too, where we're looking at data and suddenly something pops out that is unexpected. And that can lead us to actually refining our goals or refining our, our approach in that analysis. And I'm sure everybody has had these moments where you look at some, something and you just think, wow, I didn't expect that. And we're using these tools overall to do improvements in either efficiency or workflows. Particularly, we can look at it as 
how do I make my products better? What are good processes? Where do I need to improve quality? And we have some examples here. One on the right side is actually a company that uses this business analysis very intensively. And they're also a, a huge Udo implementer, have been for a long time. And they're making music pedals, which of course, if you look at my background, is something that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, so other things that are geographically oriented are optimal site selection. Where do I need to position my, my store, my uh, sales team? Uh, all these questions that you need to answer, but sometimes you need to look at the um, fundamentals. How do I increase my sales? Or you want to know what is actually the need on my services side? How do I improve my services? And I can look at where are all my customers and find out hotspots. And you can see the hotspot analysis here with these, these red uh, pulsating um, visualization tools that, that are now available on mapping tools. And we want to bring those into Udu. That is part of where we're leading towards the end here. We have competitor analysis. And you can see these, these what we call polygons, these shaded areas that show us different data and different um, elements. And, and Corrado will actually show you an example of that very nicely uh, with a live example. And we, we have these uh, competitor locations that we can look at and compare and see, well, do I want to store next to a competitor because it's a good position or do I want it far away? And what's the demographic behind it? Um, and, and that leads me to where are we today? That's the last question <laughs> that you see on these slides. So where are we today is we have all of these different BI tools and it's overwhelming. There are 700 of those just if you look at Captera or some other sites. Uh, so if you want to pick the right one, it's quite difficult. It, it's a little bit more distinct if you look just at the open source community this is not a comprehensive list, but it's a lot shorter. And here are some of the highlights. So that is a much smaller uh, footprint. And some of those tools are really powerful and you probably used them in the past or have integrated with them. And that leads me to the actual integration part, uh, part of this. So if we look at the roadmap, we have all these open source tools and some of those are well integrated and others need to be integrated more in more depth. And the integration that we have so far experienced in the community with Udu, let's start on top with Udu 14, which is the enterprise version. They just added new spreadsheets, which is a great way to add more functionality to analysis within Udu. And uh, I had a discussion with Corrado, and excuse me if I use that uh, as an example. Uh, because we have two different viewpoints. I said, you know, I would like to have everything in Odoo. And Corrado says, well, does that make sense? Because uh, there are these other tools that are really powerful. Why, why don't we combine that rather than making one tool everything? You get better quality if you have expert tools. And I, I must say, I agree with that. But I also... I have a split personality because I would like to have everything in one tool or have at least the experience out of one tool. And maybe that's where integration really becomes powerful. If I have different tools and different systems, but I can't put it all in one to make it a, a seamless user experience. And I think we can probably agree that the seamless user experience and the ease of handling and the, the, the ability to see all that data that is, in the end, the, the goal for uh, tools. So um, now I, I don't want to get into too much detail on all these OCA tools that we have. But just if you look at this, you see there's quite a number of initiatives um, that have OCA behind them, which is the, the view editor, um, which is designated as an OCA tool. And then there are supporting um, tools like the report engine, MIS Builder, and there was a presentation earlier today on MIS Builder, and um, so there's a link here uh, if you if you get the slides. But 
Uh, there's also some backend stuff for importing from other sources and there are ETL tools. And of course, anybody that does migration will, will probably at one point run into ETL tools to pull data and migrate that over and make sure that um, a migration works well and is, is well scripted. And then we're getting to something that is not open source, but it's very interesting. And that is Google um, Data Studio. And I'm skipping the spreadsheet because that's standard uh, in, in Odoo. And um, Google Data Studio is something we wanna talk a little bit more about. So that's actually where I'm handing this over to Corrado and, and so maybe you can introduce yourself a little bit and also um, tell us what you think about Google Data Studio. So thank you Wolfgang and hi to everybody. Uh, yeah, uh, Data Studio is part of the platform uh, provided by Google that is called uh, Google Cloud Platform. It's uh, all free, it's a, a only online tool and what we, uh, we're able to, we find out that was really interesting about uh, uh, Data Studio is that you can use it embedded in web pages and uh, in other kind of softwares. And uh, that is really um, connected, connectable to different data sources, databases. Uh, uh, you can connect it to streams of data. And uh, you're able uh, to create charts, maps, tables. You can basically do everything that you need uh, as, a, as a BI analyst or, or a business analyst. Maybe we can, uh, shift to, 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 the, to the, yeah. So um, in itself, and, and uh, connect uh, that is a, a, a spreadsheet on its own. And, and of course you can connect it to a data browse, uh, for instance, uh, BigQuery that is the native data browse provided by Google. Uh, what we're seeing here, it's a, a first example of a, of a business analysis uh, uh, on, uh, on, the, on the wine market. This was part of the project that we run last year and we are still running this year uh, for the third time with the University of Padova. Uh, basically, it's a collection of 13 databases uh, where the students uh, uh, using Odoo, the uh, community uh, and the education uh, version of, um, of Odoo, uh, they were putting on a campaign, a marketing campaign. So the, 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 the interesting thing that you can probably appreciate with, the, with, this, um, with, this, uh, with this demo is that uh, Data Studio gives you the, the possibility to embed uh, a map and uh, a spreadsheet uh, or, or a chart or a pie chart. And then you can combine all together the, the, these elements and to, uh, to provide a, um, a sales analysis. Uh, you can select uh, different uh, range, uh, ranges of time. Uh, you can select uh, different uh, types of, of wine. Uh, yeah, and Wolfgang was like uh, showing you that uh, you can uh, directly um, pass through from the from the website. You can connect to the Real Data Studio uh, website and the Real Data Studio tool, and uh, so you can select the, the the different ranges, different types of of of, of wines, different brands, different appellations. So basically, you can select different dimensions of the data that you are looking at. And of course, you can change uh, even the metrics that you are basing your analysis to. Uh, so it could be a, 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 quantitative, a quantitative analysis or a value analysis. It can be a point of sales analysis. And then using the map, uh, you can drill in to a specific region and all the selections that you are doing are combined together. So if you drill in to the selection, Basically, all the data, uh, the, the domain that you're looking at is uh, uh, drilled into the selection that, you, uh, that you've done. And um, you can switch from a regional point of view to a point of sales point of view, focusing on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on a specific region that you're looking at. 
maybe it's not working in this moment. Okay, you know what? Yeah, deselect the region, and then you can drill drill into the to the to the to the to the point of view. So basically, what we're seeing is the same data, the same information. Uh, looked from a different point of view and uh, different information that are gathered from the same uh, data set av available. Uh, uh, yeah, it takes a little bit because this, this, this data suit is directly connected to the BigQuery uh, data warehouse that we have uh, uh, in the back. Uh, maybe we can switch to the second page of, of, of this one, uh, so we can, in the same domain of the data set that we are looking at, we can drill into uh, different uh, top ranges, top sellers of, of the same data set that we are looking at. Uh, we can combine uh, um, uh, images, uh, maps, uh, and we can refine our search. We can, yeah, we can select uh, an item and focus all our analysis to uh, only that item. Uh, in this case, it's, it's a brand, uh, but it could be a grape, it could be a region, it could be a, a, a appellation of, of the wine. And um, combining them, you can, yeah, what, what, what is, it, what is called is drilling analysis uh, or, 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 or really business intelligence itself. Uh, I don't know if you, if you want to switch to the, to the last one, to the last sh sheet of, the, the, of this presentation. You can also combine the same information with, uh, on a uh, more or less like a spreadsheet. Uh, it could be a, a per period or per region spreadsheet. In this case, it's a per, per period. You can look at trend analysis and, and the, 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 all to, together the, the change based on the selection that you, you've done. Uh, if, yeah, if you select one, one specific uh, point of, 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 of the spreadsheet, of course, you have the, 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 the drilling of the information. Um, then uh, I think that we can uh, switch it to do to, to the to the second uh, demo if you want. Uh, this is uh, uh, an example of um, uh, two different data sets, two different systems. Uh, one is Odoo, the other one is a, a VHMS system, so our house maintenance system. Uh, the interesting part of this one is that what you are seeing here is uh, something that is updated in real time. So basically, you're not looking at uh, data from one source, but two different sources combined together in the data warehouse. And uh, if you open the, the data studio, we can refresh the page directly from the data studio um, tool and uh, appreciate that each a few seconds, you see that there's a, a new record. We have a, basically a system that is uh, simulating the, 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 the um, uh, stock um, the transactions between the, the different warehouses and different companies. Um, the, inter the interesting part here is the fact that you can look at uh, the whole picture of the company uh, in real time, uh, independently from, from, the, from the data source that is uh, provided by one system or the other. And in this, in this way, you can control, uh, and, and how, how Greg was saying in the previous talk, if you want to uh, put a strategy, if you want to uh, put on the floor the strategy, you need to uh, be um, aware of if you have the stock that is needed for the strategy or not. In this way, you can control the whole picture. And um, I think that's more or less, uh, uh, if there's no questions, if you don't, have, don't want to, 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 to go further to, to one point, uh, Volkan. Yeah, this is, uh, thank you for uh, guiding us through this. This is a pretty amazing tool. And um, I actually had a chance after uh, Corrado pointed me to this to play with that. And it was an amazing experience to, within half an hour, I was able to create my first charts that actually interacted with each other. I had tables and charts. And I, I based on our uh, own 
we'll do a system that we're using for our project management control. And I was able to get the data out of that and show our trends and everything right there within half an hour, I was ready to go. Now that was just me playing. And as, as Corrado, as you said, um, the power comes out of combining multiple sources. Like in, in, in this case here, I think you mentioned there are at least two systems or so that are combined yeah. here in, in, in this. One is low boost, the other one is a warehouse management system. Yeah, so we, uh, we need to think this through and the thinking part is going to take a lot longer than actually the implementation part. Um, so it helps to have a tool like this to quickly prototype something and then do it right based on feedback from the users, etc. That brings me back to the presentation and some of the um, ideas that we want to discuss with you guys. So I'm hoping that if I click this, it's getting me right back to the presentation and it does. Yeah, cool. Okay, so we showed you the, the first presentation here. The second one you saw also, which was the warehouse real-time analysis. And uh, then this is actually something you wanted to talk to as well, Corrado. Yeah, I just like a, a, a wrap up of what, what I said. Yeah, the, the, basically the idea is that uh, with the, 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 the data that you see using a system, it's the tip of the iceberg, while the, the, the old information that, uh, that is available uh, from, from the data uh, that are stored in the data set, that's, that's uh, it's beneath, it's, it's what you, you don't see at first and you need to, to drill in to get those information. That is uh, the path that is generally uh, uh, teach a school that it's a, you get information that data you get information from data and then you can achieve knowledge from that information and the good thing is that uh, uh, this tool gives you the, the possibility the chance to do it online integrating different sources and then as you as, as you saw you can you uh, prepare your uh, data studio and then you can embed it let's say on the website as we did for, for our clients, that is the, the, the usual way that we mm, we present it to, to clients, embedding it on the, 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 the Google sites, but you can also embed it in, the, in Odoo or in different kind of softwares. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I like that visualization of the, the iceberg and uh, that we, we need to drill deeper. Yeah. Um, thanks for sharing this. Um, a very different way to look at data. This is actually a little bit blurred out on purpose because there's some uh, data. This is this is a slide that was presented at um, one of our conferences uh, last year from one of our customers. Uh, you can see it's through. And they have done an amazing job early on to leverage the power of mapping and GIS in a way to see where are all these customers, how do I um, really target the right customer base for my sales force. Because in, in this case, um, they of course rely on going out there, talking to people, but having extra time to find the nearest next person that they can connect with quickly. And, and this is, you know, mapping allows us to do this and also see the stats and analysis based on that. Another example, that was part of an analysis we did for um, a company is heat mapping. And heat mapping, for those who are not so familiar with that, it's actually a really powerful way to take all your data. And it's not just the density of points that we're looking at here. It's actually each point is weighted. And you may see that uh, if you look closely, you see that some dots over here are larger than others. And this is a typical uh, GIS, geographic information system visualization where we have uh, dot sizes based on volume of sales, for instance, or, or revenue or, or whatever um, you want to map out. And, and that gives you an idea about the, the size of these, these dots. Uh, you also, in this case, can overlay the heat maps and you can see this really bright spot. So there's one organization that's buying a lot of stuff. And this is uh, possibly because it's a 
it could be a channel partner in this case, and this is just a, an address they use uh, for delivery. Uh, but if you filter it properly, you can see based on your filter sets, uh, direct shipments to customers. And then these, these hotspots give you an idea, where should I focus? For instance, uh, this huge market potential over here with the hotspot shows me that there is a good correlation between the, the market potential uh, if, if the dot represents the market potential and the, the heat map. On the other hand, if I look at areas that are um, not represented by a, a large dot like this one, uh, I have actually sales potential here. I could go in and do more selling. So there's some ways to interpret what I'm looking at here. Um, it depends on how you set it up, but powerful to visualize because our brains are geared towards detecting patterns. We're not good at looking just at spreadsheets and rows and rows and, and columns of columns. Patterns is what immediately clicks with our brains. And there are some exceptional people, um, I'm working with one of them, who looks at spreadsheets and sees this. Uh, I don't have that ability. Um, but if, you, if you're like that, then you don't need maps. Uh, for the rest, normal uh, people, uh, my capacity, lower capacity level, I need this. So uh, this is based on REST partner. Another example, simpler map, uh, and um, it's straight out of the field services, uh, OCA model. We have the ability to map out where customers are and then also drill in and use the maps interactively. And this is where I'm leading with the, the next um, slide, which is actually uh, GIS integration. So how do we integrate GIS into, into the system? There are many open source GIS tools, and I listed some of those, and it's not a comprehensive list, but the big ones are here, QGIS, GeoServer, uh, and, and MapServer, and open layers is used to visualize OpenStreetMap and other cool layers that are integrated in these server tools. And the server tools can be used um, to visualize and connect to databases, just like Google Data Studio did. But the integration with Udo uh, is still in its infancy. We have seen that uh, Udo SA just switched from Google Maps over to Mapbox, for instance. Mapbox has really nice cartography. They, they have nice tools, but it's not really a full open source solution either because it's like Google, a commercial entity, uh, that um, has a lot of proprietary stuff as well. GeoEngine, on the other hand, is a fully um, supported OCA um, tool that doesn't require additional licenses uh, and that you, you can find under OCA Geospatial. And we, we see some other presentations here in the next, uh, over the two days of, of mapping tools but what I envision is the, this gap, it's a G, GIS server, whatever flavor, fully integrated with Udo that I don't even have to have another installment. I can install that. And that gets me to the vision where I think we need to go. And that is to integrate BI at a higher level to let Udo users configure graphs and charts. And whether that is an Udo tool or whether that's something that's just nicely embedded, doesn't matter, but it needs to be uh, seamless, as I said earlier, and integrate these open GS tools within Udo and include maps and map analysis with BI tools and also allow mapping of multiple entities, not just the customers, not just um, uh, infrastructure, but combine multiple layers within Udo. That's where we need to go. And I think OCA is the right forum to get there quickly. And then hopefully it makes commercial sense for Udo SA to also integrate more of that in the, in the core tools. And that leads us to, to our next slide, which is the last. And it really um, is, uh, I think we have four minutes left. The, Q&A, any questions? None yet, Wolfgang, in the chat, but I was curious uh, about if there was any way Corrado could post a YouTube video about how you combine the data from the warehouse management solution in Odoo into the business intelligence tool. Is there, 
How did, 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 what, did Corrado provide that to you directly, Wolfgang? He taught you how to do it, and then you were able to do that analysis from the data in Odoo? Oh, um, I, I can probably just post a quick um, video on how to do that directly, but I think what Corrado has done is a lot deeper. Uh, I mean, what I, what I did was uh, me being interested uh, in how these tools work where Corrado brings in a professional experience in combining these different sources uh, at a level that um, I, I, I don't really want to reinvent the wheel that, that uh, his, his company uh, BIKM already has done. So that's why we're actually talking together because I think Corrado, and speak, please speak on, on this yourself, uh, there yeah. is more to it than just a simple set of mouse clicks, right? Yeah, the, the, the point is that uh, if, if, you, if you prepare a manual dimensional analysis, it's really quick. Uh, what, we, what, what, what I showed you is that uh, it's a multi-dimensional analysis. So basically you have to prepare what is called a data warehouse. For that, you need for sure to spend some time, to invest some time into integrating different sources, designing, uh, it doesn't really matter. We, we chose uh, uh, big uh, BigQuery because it's native uh, data browse system provided by Google, but you can use the, uh, uh, other, other, other tools. The point is that you have to design the dim dimensions and think of that if you want to compare different, uh, um, uh, the, the, the different snapshots of the say of the of the balance sheet or, or, or different time period of your analysis. Uh, uh, um, uh, an ERP system is a transactional system, so it records all the, the data that is needed now. But let's say if you want to compare, let's say, let's say we have a, um, a client in the fashion industry. What they do is they they, com they compare different seasons, different different collections. They compare the the, the week. Uh, of this year on the same week of last year. To do that, you cannot do it uh, with the, the, the raw data. We have to create the multidimensional uh, model, and then you can uh, build up the, 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 the data tool, the analysis tool on top of that. Without that, you cannot really look at to, to, to those uh, uh, dimensions in, in the proper way. Uh, did, did, I, did I answer your, your, your question? Or? Yeah, thank you for ch chiming in on my, my question to the question. <laughs> yeah, very much. So back Good to answer. you, Rich. No, I'm just saying that's an excellent answer, Corrado, because it isn't just plugging two different data sources into one visualization tool, but there does have to be some expertise and nuance in terms yeah. of being able to normalize sure. those data sets to be able to, and, and to compare uh, over time. And I like how you mentioned too, that it's not just about balance sheets for accounting, or, uh, but it is, it, it is sales trends and other you know, inventory trends manufacturing trends yeah. and all the data they want to measure. Yeah, Great. that was one of the questions uh, of uh, one of our uh, one of our clients. Uh, um, the, the big issue was that having different tools, they were not able to see that the, they have subcontractors, uh, they, they have the, the stock available uh, at their subcontractors that obviously they are not using the, their own system. So how, the question was, uh, how can we manage to see our real stocks, even if you are not really uh, um, manipulating them with our system. And that's what was my point with both of them before. You have to, you need something different to put together those data and it's different uh, structures of data, different databases, different languages, different uh, fields that populate it. So you need to combine them and to organize them. Excellent, Corrado. Thank you. And if we could, uh, in the chat, we noticed that Devendra posted that in, anyone needs to import geodata and some help to get started, that there is a GitHub repo that, uh, that talks about that. So thank you, Devendra, yeah. for that. Any other questions from the community? Otherwise, we're going to move on to, we're going to let Corrado and Wolfgang uh, rest for happy hour, or lunchtime in Wolfgang's case, and move on to Daniel's Dinner talk. For me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dinner for you. A nice, beautiful glass of Chianti yeah. or something. Thanks, Rich. And thanks, Corrado, for helping on this. Thank so you. Awesome. Thank you, Wolfgang. Thank you, guys.